Hey, what's up, everyone? We are in a brand new series called It's Personal. You heard it right. It's personal. Of course, I'm going to start with a story. Listen, I remember my first day as a freshman in high school. <laughs> so memorable. Here I am, a pimple face, skinny little kid with a staring problem. Matter of fact, I still get in trouble for my staring problem. Now, I, I never really went out of my way to make friends because I had my brothers and my friends from the neighborhood. But man, the, the vibes at Edgewater High School was crazy. Very eclectic group of students. The, I was a minority, so the student population was very diverse. I mean, it, it, it reminded me of one of those high schools that you'd see on TV. The most memorable thing about my first day as a freshman in high school was sixth period, earth science. I walk into the classroom and I see a young lady sitting there with green eyes. It was the first time ever that, you know, I ever saw a girl with green eyes and you guessed it right, she immediately be, became my crush. I mean, I, I couldn't, I, I would fumble my words around her. I, I really didn't know how to act. And so what did I do? I decided to sit near her, right? And try to get to know her. And so a few weeks passed, I realized that, you know, at 13 years old, I, I, I just wasn't ready for a relationship. I wasn't ready to have a girlfriend. I wasn't mature at all. And I just wasn't ready to deal with the emotions that it came with in regards to being in a relationship. But, you know, we decided to be friends. We were just friends. We would help each other with our schoolwork, so forth and so on. Fast forward, later on in the school year, about halfway through the school year, I see her in the courtyard eating lunch alone. So, you know, as a friend, I decided to actually put myself in a position where I say, you know what, I'm going to see how she's doing. You know, she's sitting there alone. I'm going to keep her company. So I walk up to her seeing how she's doing. And she's like, well, I'm just waiting on my, you know, on my friend to get her lunch or whatever. Five seconds later, her friend walks up and she proceeds to introduce me to her friend. She looks over at me and she says, I, I, I'm sorry, what's your name again? And I'm looking at her like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, my name is Samson. Oh, I just forgot, boy. I'm like, okay, that's weird. We've been we've been talking throughout the entire school year. I mean, we, we say hi to each other in passing, uh, in between classes all the time. How could you forget my name? I, I thought we were cool. I thought we were friends. Have you ever been in that situation where you thought a relationship you had with someone was deep or it was tight and only to find out that that relationship wasn't as personal as you would have liked it to be. I mean, think about it. I think it's safe to say that we all live with these two expectations, that one, relationships shouldn't be fake, and two, we want relationships that are personal. Do you know the cheat code of how you can tell if a relationship is personal or not? Do you have a generic nickname? Yeah, that's right, do you have a generic nickname? Like. D does someone call you bro, buddy, cuz, cuzzo, chief, dog, fam, guy? See, with me and this young lady, my nickname was Boy. Yeah, she'd call me Boy all the time. I, I just, you know, I, when, when, you, when I think about back then, she, was, she would always say, stop playing, boy. You so crazy, boy. Stop messing with me, boy. You so stupid, boy. So that was my generic nickname. See, it's safe for us to assume or for us to realize that the opposite of fake is real. And when it comes to relationships, the opposite of real is personal. See, someone can be cool with you, but th that doesn't necessarily make them close to you. They can know some things about you, but it doesn't necessarily mean that 
they're in a personal relationship with you. See, they might know what math class you're in. They might even know what brand you wear. But it doesn't mean that you guys have a personal relationship. So much so that being personal with someone actually puts you in a totally different category. If I were to ask you right now, think about as many people as possible that you can think of that know you by name. Would God make it on that list? Because Luke 12, 7 specifically says, indeed, the very numbers of your hair on your head are numbered. Or maybe I am kind of messed that up. Luke 12, 7. Uh, indeed, the very hairs on your head are numbered. If you ask me, that's pretty personal. And I get, I get where you're going with this. You're like, how can a God that created this universe, a big God, know my name personally? I believe that he does know our name individually. He knows uh, who we are individually. He cares for us individually. And a story that helps me understand that is the story with Jesus and the way that he interacted with Zacchaeus. See, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He wasn't just a regular tax collector. He was a chief tax collector. He was a boss. He was over other tax collectors um, of this province. And Zacchaeus was a Jew working for the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire, this is a nation that bullied the Jews. So just think about it. Zacchaeus is probably the most hated man in town. You may be wondering why, because the tax collector seems to be a pretty good, you know, pretty good profession. Well, back then, tax collectors were scammers and they would actually collect more money than what was owed only to pocket the rest for their gain. So Zacchaeus was a rich man because of, you know, what he would do. So let me, so that you're not lost in translation, let me help you wrap this idea around your head. So equivalent, this would be the equivalent to Zacchaeus back in those times. Someone who goes to school with you, someone who looks like you, they take or they steal all of the money that you've been collecting for your fundraiser for nothing, o only to just put it in their pocket. And Jesus, on the other hand, at this time, he was something like a big deal. He had performed miracles. He had healed people. He had, you know, he had preached powerful messages and he's traveling through Jericho. Everyone is trying to see Jesus and Zacchaeus of small stature, like he was described, he was a little guy. He decides to climb the tree to see Jesus. Now, uh, based on some research from skeletal remains that were found, the average Middle Eastern man was five foot five inches tall. And the text, the Bible says that Zacchaeus was a small man. So it's safe to assume that Zacchaeus is probably not even five foot tall. Matter of fact, I think about the gymnast, uh, Simone, Biles, who's like four eight, four nine, Zacchaeus was probably that small. He climbed the tree so he can get a glimpse of Jesus. And here we see, as Jesus is traveling through Jericho, he looks up at this tree to have this interaction with Zacchaeus. So let's see how uh, Luke records this in Luke nineteen five through seven. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. See, out of all the people in the crowd, Jesus hollers at Zacchaeus and he not only calls him by name, he invites himself over to Zacchaeus' house. Now, that's even crazier than your favorite celebrity following you on Instagram and commenting on all of your pictures. You see, what Jesus does in this instance, he not only says I'm real, but he says that I'm personal. I, I, I not only want to have a real relationship with you, but I want to have a personal relationship with you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if there's three things that we should pay attention to in our lives, it's how to treat 
people, how to make people feel valuable, worthy. So there's three applications or three steps or maybe just three things that we should live by that will help us get into a more personal relationship with people. One, learn people's names. How can you have a personal relationship with anyone if you don't know their names? Secondly, learn how to pronounce their names. Learn how to spell their names. See, my, my name is Samson Georges, and if any of you are like me, growing up, people always mispronounced my name or misspelled my name, right? It's Samson, S-A-M-S-O-N, but for some reason, people would say Samson, and they'd put a P uh, right in the middle of my name, or my last name is Georges, and still to this day, people call me Samson George. They totally leave off the S. Even when they spell it, like they totally leave off the S. It's aggravating, but I'm learning to live with it. So learn how to pronounce and spell uh, people's names. And then lastly, probably most importantly, when you see people address them by their name. So, and I'm probably a huge culprit of this. You shouldn't address people by, what's up, cuzzo? Or I do this a lot, hey, what's up, boss? What's good, chief? What's, oh, what's popping, fam? No, address people by their names. If I can leave you with a quote, the tiny ripple of hope you set in motion can change the path of someone's life. I'm going to repeat it. The tiny ripple of hope you set in motion can change the path of someone's life. See, Jesus, every time he encountered someone, that person had a new sense of hope. So us as believers, as followers of God, when we interact with, individual, with, with individuals, do they leave our presence with a new sense of hope? Do they leave our presence feeling valuable? Do they leave our presence knowing that someone knows their name? Because guess what? We all want relationships that aren't fake and we want our relationships to be personal. Until next time, I love you all.